What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School. Just wanted to uh, talk to you a minute, kind of uh, playing off of the uh, video that I did the other day with uh, the concealed carry and training. I uh, just wanted to kind of go over a few things after a uh, recent article that I read and even posted uh, onto our uh, Facebook page uh, talking about uh, essentially carry, uh, concealed carry. Uh, the gentleman did not have a holster. Assuming there wasn't a whole lot in the article about how or what exactly happened, but he was carrying without a holster and uh, ended up shooting himself and unfortunately ended up passing away from that gunshot wound. So it is important that you have a good holster when you're carrying. Uh, as you can see, kind of laid out here on the table, I've got uh, a couple of different types of holsters. Uh, this one is a G code, and these weapons. As you can see, are unloaded, uh, as well as the one in this Kydex holster. All these weapons are unloaded. I would just sit them up here out of the way. Uh, but back to this, this is one of the G-Code holsters that I've purchased. Uh, I use this uh, mainly with my vest. Uh, as you can see, it's got the little uh, pins back here. Uh, this is... Uh, interchangeable from a vest to a hip holster to a leg rig uh, so this is one reason I went with the g-code was so if I need to take it off of my chest rig I can go to a hip holster or a leg holster pretty conveniently plus I like the way that it secures it you have the kydex of course that locks it in I mean you can see it's not really going anywhere just as an extra safety you've got this on there so it does happen to pop out uh, as you're running or moving, it's not going to go anywhere and it's real easy. You just come in, hit that button, and you're out and ready to go. So this is, uh, of course, this is all Kydex. Again, it's G-Code. Uh, all the holsters that I have here, I'll list them in the uh, description below, as well as the uh, websites where you can get them. Uh, G-Code makes good holsters. I know a lot of people uh, that use them. Uh, this one here is one that I use with my... Uh, shield. This is more for uh, Glock 19 or 23 as you can see. And then this one I use uh, for my shield. It's all Kydex. It's got the little uh, belt loop. It is an inside the waistband. And as you can see, it fits right down in there. Uh, this was actually made from one of my students that has been through a couple of classes. Ross Learn. Uh, it's Black Mountain Holsters is his company. It's www.blackmountainholsterco.com. Again, I'll have all the websites, all the holsters named, listed out in the description below. Uh, but just kind of wanted to go over some different options here to make sure we're carrying safely because you don't want to just throw your gun into uh, the side of your pants or the back of your pants or shorts, whatever you might have on. You want a good holster. And uh, some other holsters here. Here's another Kydex holster. It is a... Uh, outside the waistband holster it just depends on you know what you're wearing how you want to carry uh, outside the waistband you can print a little bit more than inside the waistband and what i mean by printing is when you're you can kind of see the outline of the uh, weapon inside uh, your shirt sweatshirt whatever it might be that's what a lot of people refer to as printing uh, but as you can see this is also made for a glock i apologize this is an inside the waistband my mistake you can see the, the long piece here that comes up to kind of protect it from you know, sweat and stuff getting onto the weapon if you don't wear an undershirt or anything like that. And then here is another inside the waistband. This is a gal code. It is all leather. Uh, the belt loops, everything is all leather. And you can see it's for a 23 or a 19. This down in there, it's a very comfortable holster. Uh, this was really my first first gun and first holster uh, when I started carrying concealed. Now this is a double stack Glock so it is a little bit more bulky, gets a little heavy sometimes. So that's why in the summertime I go with the uh, holster from Black Mountain Holsters as well as the shield because as you can see how much, well, how much more slim the shield is compared to the Glock, so it's a little bit more comfortable in the summertime if I'm wearing shorts and things like that. Uh, 
You also have options of pocket holsters. Unfortunately, I don't have a pocket holster here. That's what a pocket holster would be was it would essentially look like this. There's no um, belt loop or anything to hook anything to a belt. The gun will fit down in there, and then you just slide it right into your pocket. A lot of times it'll look like a little wallet or something like that. It doesn't really, you know, print too much. I have a uh, Glock, the 380. Uh, I've got a pocket holster. Usually when I'm wearing gym shorts or something like that, I'll carry it, drop it right in my pocket. It looks like I'm carrying a wallet, so it's nothing uh, too big or bulky or anything like that. It doesn't, you know, weight down my shorts where I'm constantly having to pull them up, you know, kind of drawing attention to myself. As far as your mag pouches, or mag holsters. Uh, this is just a cheap Phobos that I use during training. Uh, a lot of times when I carry it's just a uh, single mag pouch that I have. Unfortunately I don't have that here with me and I apologize for that. That might be something I come back and uh, address in a, a later video. But as you can see the mags they'll just fit right down in there. And sometimes I'll even carry this. You know in the winter time I might go with the uh, G-Code on the uh, outside of the waistband, I've also got a black point, uh, which is leather and kydex together, and I'll wear it. It is an outside of the waistband, and I'll carry my Glock. And usually in the wintertime with a big sweatshirt or a jacket or something like that, it doesn't really print, and it's fairly comfortable too. These are fairly, uh, the mag pouches, holsters, however you want to call it, are very comfortable as well. Easy to get the uh, mags uh, in and out. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different options when it comes to holsters. There's other things besides what I have laid out here. You've Uncle Mike's, um, tons of different options uh, when it comes to holsters. The most important thing is, is have a holster if you're going to carry. Uh, don't just throw the gun into your uh, pants, uh, front, back, side, wherever it might be, because the main thing you're wanting to protect, as you can see, with every one of these holsters is the trigger. Because there's no protection when you don't have a holster. This could get snagged on your pants, it could get snagged on your shirt, or if you're going to draw the weapon, a lot of times you might get a little too excited with it and get your finger in there on that trigger. And there you go, it goes off. So as you can see, the trigger is completely covered in this one. completely covered in this one as you can see completely covered in this one and then as far as the shield it is completely covered front and back so there's nothing that's going to get in there and get in on that trigger and uh, a lot of times this is uh, when you're reholstering this is when a lot of accidents tend to happen is when you're going back in the holster because we don't pay attention uh, to what we're doing and I'm not going to get too much on a tangent on that I'll do something uh, a video about that later just kind of going over things that can happen when you're going back in the holster uh, the other thing when it comes to concealed carry is a good belt you want to make sure you have a good belt I always tell everybody if you can squeeze the belt and it folds up that's not a good belt to carry now if you're carrying a little bit smaller firearm something like a shield or uh, 380 or something, uh, 22, a little bit smaller, you can kind of get away with having a little bit more flimsy belt because I'll be honest, I have carried my shield uh, with, you know, a very cheap flimsy belt. And I've got a belt right here, as you can see. This is a uh, 511 belt. Uh, there's tons of other belts that are out there. Cobra, um, I think Vickers has some. Viking Tactics has some. So you've got tons of options as belt. Uh, with belts. Uh, this is kind of a nylon. I like it just because it's got the velcro. It's easier uh, to you know adjust compared to your leather belts where you got to go in and out of the belt loop. But uh, the leather belts, they make. there are leather belts out there that are just as good. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to see. I'm squeezing it and it's not folding over. And that's what I'm talking about. If this thing were to just fold in half and it's, I'll tell you what, let me show you with I'm going to do it and show you what this. So, if you can take your belt and just kind of squeeze it, see how that's folding in half? 
somebody else talking to you. If you can do that with your belt, it's probably not a good belt to carry with. See with this, I mean, I'm putting, you know, a lot of force behind it and it's not bending. That's one thing that you want to do uh, with the belt is ch to check it out before you carry it. Uh, a lot of the uh, just normal belts that you're going to buy in just about any store probably aren't going to be sturdy enough to carry unless you're just carrying a small firearm. So make sure you've got a good belt. Make sure you've got a good holster. As far as the mag holsters, mag pouches, whatever you want to call them, you don't necessarily have to have one of those. I know a lot of people that'll carry and they just put their extra mag behind their wallet or they'll drop it right there in their pocket. So if, if that's how you want to carry that extra mag, that's fine. If you're not wanting to carry an extra mag, there's nothing wrong with that as well. I know schools and instructors are going to say, oh, you need to have, you know, uh, your main gun, your backup gun, you know, extra mags. It, it, if that's how you want to carry, that's fine. I'm not going to say that's what you've got to have. Normally, I only carry one gun and probably one magazine with me. Um, it, it all depends on, you know, what, you, what you're doing and where you're going. If you feel you need an extra, you know, a backup gun, per se, then carry a backup gun. You know, a lot of people will carry wheel guns or revolvers, whatever you want to call them. Um, 380s are real good for a backup gun. They make, uh, I definitely don't have any ankle holsters. They go right around my ankle as a backup gun. Uh, I know some people that will carry a, uh, their main firearm, so say you're right-handed on the right side, and then they've got a backup gun over on their left side. There's tons of different options out there. The most important thing, have a good belt, have a good holster. And if, when it comes to our intro to handgun classes uh, or our defensive pistol classes, this is really all you need. A good belt, a good holster, a good mag holster or mag pouches, and two magazines. Or three, two or three, whatever uh, you want to bring. We normally recommend two to three. Uh, but this is essentially all you need for our defensive pistol class. You, you don't have to go all out unless you want to get the, uh, the big uh, war belts or tactical belts. It's, it's, it all depends on who you go to. All those are is you take, you would take something like this and loop it through a uh, big, huge uh, belt that's padded. It's probably sits about that thick. Some of them are already gonna have these attached in it. So again, tons of different options out there. Uh, we normally recommend as far as the defensive pistol, since that is what comes after you're uh, getting the concealed weapons, is come and train with what you're going to carry. If you're only going to carry your gun with one magazine, then come and train with it. You're going to be going through a lot of reloading uh, with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if that's what you're going to be carrying, that's what we want you to train with. We do normally, like I said, normally recommend two to three mags with a good mag pouch and a good holster. That's really all you need for the defensive pistol because that's getting you ready to, uh, we always like to say the concealed carry gets you ready to shoot your gun. The defensive pistol is going to teach you how to fight with your gun. So please take the time, like, like I discussed in the other, to get some training and make sure you've got the proper gear to be carried. Any type of holster is going to be good. You see the different options that are laid out here for you. Like I said, I'll have all these listed below uh, with the websites as well as where they came from. The only downside is uh, this one I'm not. Ah, it's a Blade Tech. So I, someone had given me this. Uh, they were getting rid of their uh, Glock 19 and they weren't going to need the holster anymore so I had the 23. It fits. Uh, I honestly I have not carried this one yet when it comes to my Glock uh, it's usually this one or the black point that I don't have with me and I apologize I'll take a snapshot of it or put a picture of what the uh, black point but it's just it's got the uh, it's almost like a cross breed and it's got the leather in the back the kydex in the front it's a very comfortable holster it isn't out like I said it isn't outside the waistband uh, inside the waistband uh, these are, this one with the shield is very comfortable. There's been times that I've, you know, forgotten that I even had it on me. So that's, that's how comfortable they can be. Uh, is it comfortable, comfortable? No. When you're carrying, it's going to be, you're, you're looking for that 
uncomfortable comfortable. There's going to be some uncomfortable to it, uh, but that's all part of being able to carry and being able to uh, protect yourself and your family. You know, it's you're not. If you find something that's extremely comfortable, please comment. Let me know what you've got. I'll be glad to uh, look it up and uh, give it a try and see if it's that comfortable. But it, I, it, I've yet to find a holster that is absolutely immaculately comfortable. It all, like I said, it all depends on what you're carrying, how you want to wear it. But please look into investing in some type of good holster. Make sure you've got a holster. Even if you're going to be keeping it in your house, you can probably go a little bit cheaper on the holster. If it's not something you're going to be carrying, you're just going to keep it in your house or in your vehicle. Uh, because in the state of South Carolina, you can carry glove box, armrest, or trunk. Uh, normally in the trunk, I would recommend putting it, go ahead and just put it in a, a gun box or a small gun safe, something like that. If you're going to go into the glove box or the armrest, you know, just uh, you, they've got cheap nylon holsters you can get for like 10, 15 bucks. Not something I would recommend normally carrying with, uh, but if it's something where you're keeping it in the house or just going to keep it in your vehicle, there are some cheaper options that you can go with. So I really hope uh, this video kind of helps everybody decide on, you know, what type of holster to go with. Uh, I'll be honest, again, uh, Ross, Ross Learn with Black Mountain Holsters, uh, you can't go wrong, he makes a great product. Uh, he does uh, work for uh, Biltmore House. He makes uh, holsters for a lot of their security team because he's with their security team. So he makes a very, very, very good product. Very comfortable, uh, very inexpensive, and it works really well. So again, Geco, Galco, Blade Tech, Black Point, all kind of options. Find something that works for you and work and go with it. Do not, please. Do not carry your firearm on you without a holster, even if it's in your pocket. Because a lot of times we drop keys in our pocket. Uh, we might have a pocket knife in our pocket. And you know, there's tons of things that get thrown into our pocket that can get up into the trigger guard and get in on this trigger and cause it to go off. So please, make sure you've got a good holster. Once you've got a good holster, make sure you're paying attention to how you reholster your weapon uh, if you ever have to draw it out. Because that's another time that accidents do happen. So again, I hope this video helps everybody. Please like, share, comment below on other things that you'd like to see, or if you have, you know, other holsters that you think are really good, comfortable holsters, I'll be glad to uh, do some other videos on them. Like I said, I'll get a picture of the uh, the uh, pocket holster that I've got, as well as the other uh, black point outside the waistband that I've got for the Glock, and put that up for you. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.